So one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, what is the best photography equipment for beginners? Now I've got a lot of experience in this because obviously I teach thousands of students, all right? And I get to play with loads of different cameras. So in this video, I'm gonna to bring to you what I think is the best photography equipment for beginners in 2021. We're gonna look at cameras, tripods, lenses, cases, cards, and sort of accessories that you're gonna need. I'm gonna to stick to a budget of around 550 pounds for everything, roughly. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best equipment that you can get if you're a beginner. So firstly, let's talk about cameras. Now, I'm not gonna go like nuts into the features of each camera because it doesn't matter, all right? You've gotta understand right from the start that every camera is gonna do the same thing and when you're a beginner and you're looking for your first camera, you, you know, you have it all up on the internet on your tabs and you have the camera A's got this amount of features, camera B's got this amount of features and so on, right? Well, you will never use any of them features. You've got to ignore all of that. It doesn't matter. What you need as a beginner starting up in photography is a camera that goes to fully manual and a camera that you can change the lenses on. That is it all of these fancy features that they put onto their cameras and splash all over their websites is just to compete with the next camera band brand. So totally ignore any of that, all right? So I'm not gonna go into any major detail into them little stupid features that cameras have that you never use. The first camera I wanna talk about is called the Canon 2000. D. Now in America, that's called the Rebel T7. Now this is a brilliant camera. It, it retails around about 375 pounds. That's with a kit lens. It's got a 24 megapixel sensor and it's got all the things that you need to get you started in photography. It's a crop sensor camera and that is the cameras that I recommend for beginners because it's a good middle ground. I'm not gonna go into crop sensor, full frame sensor, and all of that kind of stuff in this video. Um, I have got a whole video that explains that, but let's just put it in a nutshell. If you are starting up in photography, the crop sensor range, which is all the cameras that I'm gonna to talk to you about now, um, that's the best place to start really. It is cost effective, it's not too big to carry around with you, and yeah, it just does the job really well. So this is a 24 megapixel crop sensor camera. Now the thing that I like about Canons is that they are very easy to use as a matter of fact and I've taught thousands of people that are using Canons and I've never heard one person say I wish I bought another camera all right so that's that's something um, good to go by and the 2000D here or the T7 the Rebel T7 is actually the cheapest camera in the range that I'm going to tell you in a minute. So that is another plus thing, especially if you are on a budget. It will get you started, it's cheap, it's got all the manual settings on it, and it's easy to use. So there you go, a very good beginner's camera. Now the next one to talk about is the Nikon equivalent, and that is the D3500. Now that camera with a lens comes in at around 430 pounds. And by the way, obviously this is the price as I'm currently recording this video, right? Now for argument's sake, it is the Nikon equivalent of the Canon 2000D that I've just spoke to you about. So when it comes to these two cameras, really do you prefer Canon or Nikon? That is basically what it comes down to. Obviously the Nikon is a lot dearer, but they're both gonna do exactly the same thing. They've got um, the manual features on it. They come with a decent lens and you know, that's it really. You've got Canon or Nikon there and you just choose which brand that you would wanna go for. If you've got people around you that currently use Nikon cameras, you're probably best to go with that with the Nikon range because they can show you stuff on the camera very easily. And it's the same with Canon. If you've got people around you using a Canon camera, you know, you go with that one because they can show you easily as well, right? 
And again, the Nikon has a 24 megapixel crop sensor in it. Um, and it does all the same things. You know, you can connect it up via Wi-Fi to your phone. Um, it, it takes a really good picture. You know, they both take a really good picture. So yeah, there you go. I mean, I know you probably want me to say one or the other, and actually I will give you my verdict um, in a minute, but for now, that's it. You've got the Canon version or the Nikon version. Canon version's a bit cheaper. And the last camera that I want to recommend for beginners is the Fujifilm X-T200. Now this has got a price range of around £480, that's with a lens. So it is the dearest amongst the three. Now this one is a mirrorless camera. And what that means is that it's just a bit smaller, it's a bit more compact, it's a little bit more lighter. Again, it's a 24 megapixel camera and it does all the same things as the other lot do, right? Um, but it does do one thing that a bit better than the Canon and the Nikon version there, and that's the filming. The Fuji X-T200, it films at 4K, so if you are thinking of doing a bit of filming, a bit of vlogging, or whatever, then maybe the Fujifilm one is the one to go for in this price range. The other thing with the Fujifilm one is uh, is a lovely design. It's the I think it's the best design if you if you're going for looks, right? It's probably the best design out of them three cameras. And incidentally, here uh, when it comes to mirrorless or mirrored cameras, when it comes to the final result, it's not going to make a blind bit of difference. The the long and short of it is a mirrorless camera will be smaller. It will be more compact. And the there's pros and cons. A mirrorless camera when you look through it it takes time to kick in really because you're looking at a TV screen whereas a non-mirrorless camera you're looking directly through the lens so it's a lot quicker when you're looking through and you know you have to get used to mirrorless cameras I think but for argument's sake you know they, they both do the same thing if it is size that you're worried about then the mirrorless one is probably the best one there. Now the other thing to consider when you are buying your first camera is what you're going to do in the future now you will upgrade okay as you get into photography and you learn photography you're going to upgrade you're going to buy new lenses new bodies etc now it doesn't mean that you're not going to swap brands in the future because i see it all the time and i've done it myself you know i've used different brands for different things and whatever else but it is something to consider from the start you know you you might want to stick with Nikon or you might want to stick with Fuji or whatever because you're going to stick with that range of uh, of camera lenses and bodies etc. Now that is a choice that you will have to make and like I've said to you before they are all going to do the same thing so uh, I think generally it's to do with cost you know what I mean just think about the, the budget that you've got figure out what one that you can afford you go for that brand and you'll end up probably sticking with that brand for a very, very long time. Okay, so that is another thing to consider. Okay, so this is the bit that you probably are waiting for and it's my choice, right? So if I had to choose, and don't forget, I'm not being paid by anyone here. If I had to choose between them free cameras, and they are the free, there's lots of cameras out there, but believe me, I've got a lot of experience here. If you are a beginner and you're on a budget and you're looking to start, then there's your free right there's the free to go for my choice out of them would be the canon the canon 2000d and here's the reasoning it's the cheapest one out of all three of them it does a fantastic job it the other two do not outperform it when it comes to getting a picture all right so it does a fantastic job it's cheaper and the canons are easy to use now like i've said to you before um I get to teach lots of people. I get to play with lots of different cameras. I can tell you now that I've never had anyone complain about using the Canons. I do hear people complaining about using the Nikons. Nikons put settings in the most ridiculous of places and once you figure it out, it's fine, but I see people struggle with Nikons more than I do with Canons, and that, that is just my personal opinion. There's Nikon users out there now shouting at the screen, going, oh, I get, I, I get the same with Canons, and that's probably true, but I'm giving you my opinion because that's what I'm here for. I'm giving you my honest opinion. So if I had to choose out of them three cameras, probably go for the Canon one because it's cheaper, it does a fantastic job, and it's easy to use. So now you've got your camera that you want, 
you're going to need a lens hood right now you will need a lens hood i've got a whole video on lens hoods and it will probably come across the the screen now or i'll put it in the in a link in the description of this video okay none of them cameras that i have uh, just told you come with a lens hood and that is bad on the manufacturers i think but you're going to have to get them they're very cheap you know they can range from 15 pounds to 40 pounds and again i'm going to put links in the description of this video where you can click on it and you can go and you can view all of the products that i am mentioning in this video and you can click on them and you can go and buy them if you want they are affiliate links i'm just going to lay that out now we will get a small percent a very slight but that much percentage of the sale okay so there's a link in the description of this video it'll take you to a page it's going to list off everything that i mentioned in this video including lens hoods which you will definitely need they block um, sun flare so they block light going across the front element of your lens they also protect the lens as well if you've got a lens hood on and you're swinging your camera around you're going to smash the lens hood before you smash your lens right which is a good thing um yeah and and they're just good for reducing lens flare and giving you more contrast in your image believe me you're going to need one you will notice when you haven't got one all right so go and grab yourself a lens hood for the camera that you're buying so now let's talk about extra lenses uh, this is an extra by the way this is not included in the 550 ish budget that i quoted at the beginning this is an extra all right lenses are expensive and you will want to get extra lenses as you go forwards so i'm just going to re recommend one for now one lens that i think is a brilliant lens to just have in your camera bag and that is the 50 mil f 1.8 on the canon and the nikon so we'll talk about them first i'll come to the fuji in a minute right um so that you you might have heard it called the nifty 50 all right and again i've got a whole video on that as well where i review it so you can go and check that out but what a brilliant lens for the canon it's around about 110 pounds and i think for the nikon it's around about 170 180 pounds for the nikon's uh, uh 50 mil f 1.8 so nikon's are a bit dearer um again they both do the same thing they will be great for portraits. If you want to start taking portraits, that's the lens that you should start with. They're great for low light as well because they've got a wider aperture. And if you want to get them pictures with a really blurry background, you know, they're great for that as well. So that is an extra for you really. If you're looking to expand on lenses, that's the, the cheapest, best lens to get to add into your kit now when it comes to fuji if you choose to go for the fuji brand um, they don't do like a nifty 50 all right what they do is a 35 mil prime lens they do an f2 35 mil and that is an as your eye sees focal length and that lens currently retails at about 170 pounds um it's an it's still a great lens it will still be great for portraiture it will be great for low light stuff and it will be great for blurring out a background so it's cheap for what you get okay it's just on the fuji film they it's the 35 millimeter focal length not the 50 mil focal length which is what you'll get on the canon and the nikon now incidentally if you're watching this and you're thinking i ain't got a clue what you're talking about about focal lengths and apertures and this that and the other then don't forget to come over and see us at the school of photography.com where we do high-end professional online courses we are professional fully trained teachers so we will get you learning photography quickly accurately and you will retain that knowledge i can absolutely promise you come over and see us and join thousands of people all over the world that sign on to our five star rated courses just go and check out our feedback trust pilot google facebook you know everywhere we've got feedback everywhere all right go and check it out if you want to learn photography properly come over and see us at the school of photography.com so now let's talk about tripods now this one is really easy because there's only one that i would recommend for the beginner all right because it's such a brilliant tripod and i wish that i had a percentage for every one of these that i sold um to my learners i recommend it all the time and everyone that buys this tripod does never regret it okay it's called the velbon ef 
1061 and you're looking at a price range of around 35 pound now in america that's called the velbon ex430 and actually sometimes you see it labeled as the es61 so i don't know what velbon's doing but it's the same bloody dry bod um and it's currently called the ef61 Round about 35 pound. It's an absolutely brilliant tripod for beginners because it is sturdy, it's lightweight, and it is cheap. It comes with a pan and tilt head, and it's just gonna do the job for you. you you're gonna love it if you're a beginner. Now, you will need a tripod, right? You're gonna need one. Yes, it's something that you could get a bit later on, obviously get the camera first, but I'm telling you now, you're gonna need one. So. That's the one that I recommend. Again, I don't get paid by these companies. Um, it's just my years of experience that I am sharing with you. And that is 100% the best, cheapest tripod that you can buy. Okay, let's now talk about camera bags. Now, you're gonna need a camera bag, otherwise you're gonna ruin your camera very quickly, all right? So a camera bag, its job is to keep your camera lenses and whatever else safe so i've chosen two camera bags to recommend to you they are both by low pro which is a great camera bag make they've been going for years and basically i've chosen two of two different sizes now the first one that i've chosen is called the low pro sh 140 and it's a nice small compact camera bag that will take around the cameras that i've told told you the canon the uh, the nikon or the fuji one plus an extra small lens like the 50 mil that I've told you about as well. So that camera bag will be perfect for a camera and a kit lens and an extra small lens, plus your camera cards and all that, which I'm gonna to come to in a minute. So that's a good compact one and it comes in at a price range of around about 35 pounds. And the next one, that's, which is slightly bigger, is the Low Pro SH160. And to be honest, this is the one that I would recommend out of the two because it's slightly bigger and you do end up getting new stuff as you go forward. So you might as well get a camera bag that is slightly bigger and it's actually um, not that much dearer in price. It's uh, Sometimes you can get it for a very similar price, 35 pounds to 40 pounds. Um, and this one will take Again, all of them cameras that I've mentioned and their kit lens, but it's also big enough to take a bigger lens as well, like a zoom lens plus all of your accessories. So this is the one that I would recommend out of them too. It's obviously just a bit bigger. So if you want something really compact, actually, if, you, if you're if you not gonna buy any other lenses, then the other one's gonna be perfect. Whereas if you are gonna buy another lens, then I would definitely recommend this one, the 160, because it's gonna be big enough to carry your other lens and your accessories, okay? Now, the last thing that you are gonna need, obviously, is an SD card, a memory card, that um, obviously goes with the camera. Now, there are cheap ones out there, and they are crap, all right? You've gotta be careful when you're buying SD cards. Now, the one that I recommend, and the one that we buy at the School of Photography, is the SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 gigabyte SD XC memory card. Now, most people will be sitting there thinking, oh no, I'm gonna get a 128 gigabyte one because uh, you know it's gonna give me more storage. No, don't fall into that trap. You're much better off getting two 64 gigabyte ones rather than one 128 gigabyte one. Now the reason for that is in case one fouls. Imagine you being on holiday, and one fouls on you or you lose it, you haven't got a spare one. So it's always best to have two, I think, rather two smaller ones rather than one bigger one. Now this particular card is fast enough to deal with shooting bursts of raw files. It's fast enough to deal with um, uh, shooting 4K video. You know, it's a really good card and it is fairly cheap. It's definitely the one that I recommend we use them at the School of Photography. I film full-blown courses on these cards, so I can definitely vouch for them. And again, like I said, I'm not getting paid by Sandy, so this is just my personal views to you. So just to remind you that all of the equipment that I have told you in this video, there is a link in the description of this video. Click on it, and it will list off all of the equipment. I do 100% 
recommend this equipment for beginners in 2021, all right? I don't think you're gonna get better equipment than what I have told you in this video for this budget. Now, of course, there's no point having all of that equipment and not knowing how to use it, so don't forget to come over and see us at the schoolofphotography.com and check out our courses. We do have free previews, you know, you don't have to buy straight away, come and check out the free previews first, and hopefully we'll see you on our courses. The other thing that I would like you to do is if you've got some experience in buying photographic equipment, please put it in the comments so that other people can read and learn from your experience as well, all right? And it's good, it's good for me to know as well, you know, so put your thoughts in the description of this video as well. Please like, subscribe and hit that bell button. You really need to help us out. You've got to hit that bell button. YouTube's done something totally different now. It's not good enough to subscribe anymore. You've got to hit that bell button or right? otherwise you won't hear from us again. So subscribe and hit that bell button and press the like button. I really hope this video has helped beginners get started in buying equipment. It's a whole minefield, isn't it? Buying equipment in photography. So I hope that this has kind of cut the wheat from the chaff for you. And you know, you can now with confidence buy some decent equipment. Thanks for watching and remember, learn more at the School of Photography. Mm -hmm.